Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today is our final Spring Into Action series video. I hope that you guys have been enjoying these. Um, and I'm super excited about this week's topic because honestly in the whole entire book I love all the topics but this one was the most the one that was very close to my heart. This section is such the, you know, icing on the cake section of just, you know, separate things from the everyday stuff as we've already talked about with mind, body, soul, um, environment, and schedule. Those are all kind of what encompassed leading into the clean your emotions section. So without further ado, let's just get into the section and then um i'm gonna release a little announcement for you guys at the end but stay tuned for the announcement but let's get through this section today take out your workbooks if you have one um and if not there will be a link at the top of the description box down below for you to purchase your workbook now let's get into it so as you can see, I decorated the cover as usual, just like the other covers I have. Emotion regulation, meditate, art therapy, grounding, mindfulness therapy, self-soothe, DBT, CBT, and distress tolerance. All of these are what we're going to be going over today in Clean Your Emotions. So, there's a bit of reading in this section, um, so we're going to go through it together, and then there's also activities to do as well as normal as like the other sections. Therapy. Benefits. Communicate thoughts and feelings. Have a second perspective and opinion, and expressing yourself in a healthy way. I personally do have a therapist, and do 100% recommend that if you don't have a therapist already, to get one, no matter if you have a mental health illness or not, I feel like in today's world everyone needs some sort of therapist whether it's an art therapist a dbt therapist which we'll talk about a cbt therapist which is what i have and um yeah just having a therapist that you can go to or even a life coach even too um is a great option as well if you're not looking for the therapeutic type but you just want somebody there to motivate you and keep you going in life, a life coach would probably be a better option for you. So these are the types of therapies that I have tried. Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. DBT provides clients with new skills to manage painful emotions and decreased conflict in relationships. DBT specifically focuses on providing therapeutic skills in four key areas, which we'll talk about in this workbook. Um, I am not a trained DBT therapist. These are just skills that I learned during my time in the DBT classes that I highly, highly preach about with my friends and everything to get into dialectical behavioral therapy because it's honestly my favorite form of therapy. Yet CBT and art therapy have also helped me, which is what I'll get into. So mindfulness. The what skills, what to do when being mindful is what these what skills are. So observe what is happening in your thoughts that you're having in your breath. Just observe what exactly is happening in the moment. For example, if we were going to do mindfulness right now, I am thinking about what I have to do after this, which is homework. I am focusing on my heavy breathing a little bit. And I'm filming a video right now. And that's being mindful about what's happening in the present moment. And you describe what is around you and your thoughts. And I forgot to put a T at the end there, but you guys get my point. Um, but describe what is around you and your thought. Um, if you have anything going on in your mind or what is going on around you. And participate in something or continue breathing slowly. Meaning... If you're not really doing anything that requires you to participate in something, just sit there and just breathe and realize that you're in the present moment. For me, I am participating in filming this video and you all are participating in viewing this video. So it goes both ways. The how skills. How skills are how to be mindful. So we now learned what to do to be mindful. Now this is how you have to do it. One, mindfully, mindfully. This pretty much means that you are just very 
open-minded about the whole entire process and you're not judging it as the next se section says non-judgmental you're not judging your thoughts not judging what is happening around you there's no really opinions happening you're just basically describing in your head what is happening and be effective don't just do it in just half ass it as I would put it be effective about it and realize that this is the present moment and then the last kind of uh, mindfulness skill is reality acceptance so what this pretty much means is just accepting reality for what it is so turn the mind is a mini skill um, that pretty much you just turn your state of mind towards the positive or towards what exactly is going on in the present moment instead of what could happen in the future and what did happen in the past. You do not think about that, you just focus on the present moment for what it is. Radical acceptance is kind of the same thing where you just pretty much, without judgment, without any sort of opinions, you just accept reality for what it is. I know it's a harsh truth, but it's really good in terms of mindfulness. Um, and practicing, practice willingness and no, notice willfulness. So what this means is practice willingness to change your life for the better in the present moment rather than willfulness, which is all about just feeling like that you can't change anything right now. And practicing willingness will help you change your life for the better. So if you didn't know what that meant in this book, this is why I'm doing the series, so then you can learn more about it. Distress tolerance. So distress tolerance um, is basically things you can do to de-stress yourself, but also to control your emotions in a way that you're not going to distress or be frustrated or upset all the time so you can regulate them. So distract with accept. So accept is an acronym for activities, contributing, comparisons, opposite emotions, pushing away, thoughts, and sensations. And you can even add your own if you want in this section, but I've provided you with some and I really like these uh, examples, so I just put stars next to each, just so then um, they're little bullet points. So the first um, in accepts, the A stands for activities. Puzzles, coloring, writing, whatever you use to de-stress as an activity can go in this list. And you can make your own list and make your own like board. I used to have one of these, a little poster board, or I even had a canvas that pretty much just describes pretty much all of the stuff here for distress tolerance. So what activities I can do, what I, how I can contribute, etc. And contributing is pretty much how it's said here. Helping somebody in need. Pretty much just going out and volunteering, or even if it's not volunteering, just like helping somebody move into their new place. Or you know, helping your mom with groceries, just like helping somebody else can really help with your distress. Comparisons. Compare yourself to your past or worse self. It is so bad, especially in this society when we're looking on social media and we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. So instead of comparing yourself to other people, compare yourself to yourself is what I'm pretty much saying here. Compare yourself to your past or your worst self. For me, whenever I do that, I'm like, wow, I've changed so freaking much <laughs> since then that I'm good of where I'm at and I want to keep going in the right direction. Opposite emotions. So what this pretty much means is if you're feeling stressed out or angry, do a different activity or talk about something that involves the opposite emotion. So maybe you watch comedy or funny videos, or maybe you watch a sad movie, which I don't know why you would do that, but like maybe that helps you. I know for some people it helps to just watch a sad movie. Or scare yourself, watch a horror film, like just do something to attract to that opposite feeling. Try though to make it happy like comedy or funny videos or motivating videos just so that it helps with that positivity. Pushing away. Pretty much, I like to think of it as a mental image of mentally thinking that there's a box here 
and whatever stress and worries happen during your day in the back of your mind this box is here and you just keep putting papers or you know words or anything into this box of any sort of worries or stress during the day and what you can do is later on in the day check in with that box see if those stresses or worries are still stressful or worrisome and if they aren't you can toss them but if they are, you can work through it and make a dedicated time to work through your stresses and worries. And then thoughts. I put journaling and talk it out. Therapy can also go under this. Um, journaling is amazing for getting your thoughts out onto paper. And also just talking it out or venting it out to a friend is really, really good as well. And sensations. I just put use a stress ball or slime. <laughs> um, I don't know. For me, I like holding a blanket or stuffed animal or something but just use anything that's going to comfort you which kind of leads into this self-soothe section so self-soothing are pretty much doing activities with the six senses sight sound touch taste smell and movement and you write activities for each of the scents so this is blank for those of you that have the workbook but I wrote in some examples in case you want to include them as well. So for sight, I put Pinterest aesthetic pitch pictures. I love looking through pic uh, Pinterest, excuse me, and looking at pictures that really are just aesthetically pleasing and nice to the eye. Those really help me to soothe myself. Watching the sunrise or sunset is really soothing as well. And watching oddly satisfying videos is really, again, oddly soothing as well. So maybe those are ideas that you want to add to your list. For me, for sound, I love listening to lo-fi music or nature sounds. Or there's even some videos on YouTube I found of just soothing storytelling videos of just people telling stories in the most soothing voice. And I really just like that. So maybe look those up if you're looking for something for sound. For smell, I put lavender. Lavender is my favorite calming smell. Essential oils, candles, incense sticks, and baking cookies and brownies. Baking kind of coincides with two scents, or in a way. I mean, it kind of uses all the different scents because you're moving to, you know, moving your arm to like stir things and putting things in the oven. You're tasting really delicious cookies. You're touching them before you taste them. You can smell them as they bake and when they're in their, your hand. The sound from stirring it up or when they're cooking in the oven and just seeing the cookies. If you want to use all six of them, that could honestly work <laughs> now that I think of it. But anywho, I put it underneath smell because I love just the smell of, you know, fresh baked cookies or brownies, you know? Touch, um, I put wrap up in a blanket, hug stuffed animals, or just petting my dogs. Those are honestly really soothing to me. For taste, I love drinking my coffee in the morning to soothe my soul. Um, I also like eating things that are sweet or salty. Or just comfort food in general is really good and soothing for me. And then for yo um, for movement, excuse me, I have yoga and stretching is really soothing for me and just dancing around my bedroom is also really soothing as well. So let's move on. Again, like I said last week, this is a very long section and it's a lot of information. I highly suggest if you don't have the workbook to grab it because this is a lot of info uh, that could really help you in the long run. Alright, so next is improve the moment. So... What I mean by this, and by the way, this is all under distress tolerance, the distract with accept, the self-soothe, and improvement moment, and pros and cons, and these two also, just so then you guys are all clear. So improve the moment. So improve, again, is another um, acronym for use imagery, find meaning in the situation, pray, relax, technique, relaxation techniques, do one thing at a time, take a break or vacation, and words of encouragement. Now, to use improve the moment, you literally, at any moment of the day that you want to just improve it, in that moment, you go to this list. Use imagery. Think of, like, your cute dog, or think of a sunset, or think of a beach, think of your favorite person, just anything that's going to improve the moment to put a smile on your face find meaning in the situation. It's kind of like 
turning lemons into lessons. It's one of my favorite oracle cards in my oracle deck that I have. And it's literally just finding the lesson in the situation. No matter what is happening in your day, whether it's a bad day or a bad moment, just find the lesson in it. Pray. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be religious for this, but just praying to a higher being, to the universe, to yourself. Just praying that the moment will get better. Relaxation techniques. This could be meditation. This could be, you know, maybe just taking a nap. This could be yoga. This could be a number of different things. Just to relax your body. Do one thing at a time. Don't try to multitask when you're trying to improve a bad day. It's just going to make you feel stressed and more anxious and have that snowball effect of more things are going wrong during the day. So try to do it one thing at a time. Take a break or a vacation. Um, it doesn't, I mean, you could honestly plan a vacation if you really wanted to for this step, but this is basically just saying maybe just stop for the day. Like, take a day off from work or if you can, or just take a break, like whether it's 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever the case, um, and just do something to relax. And words of encouragement. This is really good, especially if you like Disney. You can think of a Akuna Matata, or um, you can think of a dream is a wish your heart makes, whatever motivational sayings that you like. It doesn't have to be Disney. It could literally be like my boyfriend's favorite saying actually is it could be worse. And sometimes I look up at the painting that I made of that saying that quote, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, it could be worse. It really could. And it's like a mo like a word of encouragement pretty much. Pros and cons. So basically what this is basically talking about is Whatever stressful or angry or sad situation you go through, you find the pros and cons of both doing the action and partic or participating something versus not doing the action or participating in that thing. So here's an example. I did like a basic example here um, of procrastinating everyone and their mother procrastinates sometimes and I feel like that this is a good you know example for everybody and I will definitely check in with this list as well so you're basically just writing out the pros and cons for procrastinating and also for not procrastinating so pros for procrastinating it's more fun promotes laziness and you worry about it tomorrow and you can just relax you know cons for procrastinating is there's going to be more work later, you waste time, and there's less free time later because you probably have to get that thing done later anyways. Pros for not procrastinating, your motivation skyrockets through the roof, you get more items checked off your to-do list, and you enjoy your free time more later in the day. Um, and cons for not procrastinating is your stress may increase, you feel like you're doing too much, and uncomfortableness, like just feeling uncomfortable about doing something too much for yourself. But overall, if I was looking at this list, I would promote not procrastinating because it just, you get more things done, you know? And it just, this whole entire list making thing gives you a perspective of should I do it or should I not do it, you know? So it's just kind of like a decision making tool that you can use for yourself. Uh, for intense emotions, use tip. So this intense emotions, what I mean by this is if you're having an anxiety attack, if you're really angry, if you're really depressed, you can use these. So tip represents temperature, meaning raise your temperature or, or get really cold or something. So say you're in the winter time, you can run outside in the freezing cold and get really cold. Or if it's, you know, if you want to just get yourself hot, exercise, work out, go in a hot shower, do something to just get your temperature up or down. Next, you intense exercise. Go for a run. Um, you could, you know, dance around your room. You could punch something, whatever. And then pace breathing. So basically you would um, do any sort of number. Say if you want to do four square breathing, you could do 
in for four, hold for four, release for four, and rest for four, and then continue to do that for whatever numbers you want, just like pacing your breathing after a while. And then progressive muscle relaxation, which essentially you just lay in your bed, you relax your body, and once you relax your body, you tense up the muscles in your body from your toes all the way up to your head one at a time. So you would start off with your toes, really squeeze them hard, and then you would release. Then you would squeeze your whole feet um, really, really hard, and then release. And then your shins and release. And you would keep going all the way up to your head. And it's a really good relaxation technique. And the last distress tolerance um, you know, tool you can use is stop. Basically, this is when, this is a good tool to use when your mind is racing or if you feel like you're out of control in your outer world, uh, meaning like what you're doing or whatever. So you would use stop. First, you stop what you're doing. Say if I stop filming or whatever. You take some deep breaths. You take like three deep breaths, five deep breaths, how many, however many deep breaths you need to take. You observe the situation, you look around, you see what's happening right now and just be like, oh my gosh, I've been, you know, running around or, oh my gosh, my mind is spinning. Just like kind of using mindfulness in a way and perceive effectively. Maybe, you know, you just needed that time to deep breathe and then you can go talk to your boss about maybe not having so much work to do during the day. Or maybe this could be when you're at home and you have an anxiety attack because, you know, you had a fight with your mom or something, going to go talk to your mom about how you felt in the situation. There's many different ways to do it, but taking the deep breaths helps you to stop and really think about what you can actually do to be more effective in that situation. So, now that we've done distress tolerance, these are the social skills, aka interpersonal effectiveness. I just think of these as my social skills whenever I meet a new person or in my relationships that I have, romantic, family, friends, etc. I use these tools. So to get your message across, use Dear Man. This is especially um, good if you like to write letters to your family, if you have issues going on, or if you're just overall talking to your family about something that's bothering you or to your friends or to your partner. Whatever the case is, use Dear Man. This is how you do it. You describe what you need. Let's use an example of, um, I guess I'll use the example, I don't know. Say your boyfriend doesn't text you as much, which if my boyfriend's watching, you're not this. So I'm just giving you an example. Uh, say your boyfriend just doesn't text you very often and you just don't really talk for a whole day and you're like really confused. So you describe what you need. Boyfriend, I'll say your name is, uh, I don't know, Derek. Derek, I really want, or not want, sorry. You describe what you need. I need you to text me more often during the day, even if it's just once a day. You express it. It really hurt my feelings that you didn't message me all day. Assert yourself. I want you to message me at least once a day whenever you have a five minute break just to say that you love me. Reinforce if needed. So say if they come back at you and they're like, you know, well I do message you or whatever. I just want you to message me once a day just so I know that you're okay. Stay mindful. These are like the man part is like how to do it and the deer part is what to do. So how to. Just stay mindful during the whole thing. Appear confident and prepare to negotiate because obviously it's a give or take situation in any relationship. You're not always going to get what you want and they're not always going to get what they want. But if you can agree on something that can, you know, be, meet both needs, then that would be awesome. So just be prepared to negotiate. So I use that all the time whenever I need to, you know, express how I feel about something to somebody. It's just a really good skill. Now, say if for the next one with give to be there for somebody else. 
say if your friend comes up to you, like, I'm going to give the example, my friend, I'll call her Chloe. I'm not going to use her real name, but Chloe actually came up to me and said that her boyfriend recently broke up with her. And they've been doing this back and forth thing and she's not quite sure what to do. I would be gentle with her. I would be interested in their conversation. I would validate my friend's feelings or validate them in general and have an easy manner. Not to be like, oh, that boy is, you know, a, an F boy. Like, not to come back with anger. It's just to be gentle, be interested, validate them, and have an easy manner. You know, just be there for that person. Now, for fast, is to be there for yourself. Maybe um, you have a really hard time with your self-esteem or loving yourself. This is a really good skill to use whenever you get into those mindsets. So fast. Be fair. So, you know, don't be putting too much on your plate. Don't be, you know, hard, like mean to everybody. Just be fair. Be apology free. This is one that I'm working on. Is to not say I'm sorry all the time. Uh, stick to your values. Say your values are family, your boyfriend, and your work. Stick to those and not let anybody, you know, excuse me, not let anybody, you know, overplay that those values that you have. And display truthfulness. Just be completely open and be yourself and just tell the truth always, you know? Alright, let's move on. And then the last section here of dialectical behavioral therapy is emotion regulation. So, this is ABC, is the different uh, categories of this. So it's accumulate positive experiences, build mastery, and cope ahead of time. So, this is what I mean by each. So, accumulate positive experiences. What are your positive memories? You can kind of think back on some positive memories. I'm going to share with you mine. Going to Disney World with my Nana and my family. My niece is being born. My two dogs, um, Teddy being born and keeping Henry because he came from a shelter. And publishing this workbook is honestly one of my, one of my positive memories that I have. What are your positive aspirations? This could be people, this could be things, whatever. I took these as people. So my mom, Kayla Nicholson, Demi Lovato, and lastly, Halsey, for sure. Those are like my aspirations. What has happened positively the last week? This is a really good question to ask any time that you're feeling kind of negative. And so for me, I spoke up about issues in my life to my family, to um, my mental health team. I just, I spoke up a lot <laughs> this past week, to be honest, and I'm really proud of myself for that. I got an A on my first college assignment, so I was very happy about that. And my boyfriend, Patrick, scheduled some job interviews for himself, which I'm very happy about because that means more time for us to hang out because he'll have money, you know? Um, yeah, and so that's how you can accumulate positive experiences. Just thinking back in the past, what are your positive memories? Who are your positive aspirations? And what has happened positively in the last week? Build mastery. What do you want to learn about? You know, um, learning something new every day or making time in your schedule to learn things, learn new things is always great. So for me, I want to learn more about building a business, self-publication, expanding my art practice, therapeutic art exercises, and being a better YouTuber. And then for cope ahead of time, what is your backup plan if all else fails? This is pretty much like if you've tried all of the skills that DBT offers, what are your other skills that you're going to learn, uh, use or utilize whenever those fail. Gratitude is the attitude. That's like my favorite quote by my favorite, one of my favorite I should say YouTubers, Megan Hughes. Um, just being grateful for the present moment, being grateful for anything happening. Loving myself. Using art as a tool, meaning like drawing out my feelings or 
using art as a way to express how I feel. Dancing to music, that's always been a good backup plan for me, is just having a dance party to get that energy out. Finding happiness in me time, and finding beauty in nature. Just going outside and enjoying nature, you know? And then the last two pages of my workbook, oh my goodness. Um, also, oh, I forgot this. Um, there's also some more um, emotion regulation skills here. So, let's look at those. PLEASE. So PLEASE is an acronym. This is a really good acronym to use whenever you feel like that something is going on in your body. That you're just like, I need to do something about it, but I'm not sure. So PLEASE. Treat physical illness. If you feel like you're having a cold or if you know you're having some sort of, you know, body issue, get it treated. Eat balanced meals. Avoid drug misuse. Sleep well and exercise. Those are like the core things to make sure that, you know, your body is in check and, you know, you're all, you're all good. Other skills, um, opposite actions. Basically that's kind of talking about what we talked about before is doing something um, the opposite of what you're doing. So say if you're thinking really negatively about yourself, do something that's opposite of that. Like think of positive memories, think of positive things that happened in the last week, um, think of some soothing imagery, you know, um, and check the facts of the situation, make sure that you're not just assuming something, just check the facts on everything that's happening, you know, um, and self-validation, which is self-love, just validating yourself and realizing that loving yourself is the core to regulating your emotions. And then the next form of therapy that I really like is cognitive behavioral therapy. CBT is a common type of talk therapy or psychotherapy. So this is the type of therapy that I receive still on a uh, monthly basis. They, um, so CBT really teaches about grounding techniques. So like meditation, relaxed breathing, progressive muscle relaxation. Uh, another really cool tool that I like to use is um, whenever I get caught up in negative thought patterns, I do this. So I name five things I see, four things I'm touching, three things I hear, two things I smell, and one thing that I can taste, which most of the time is just my spit or, you know, something I'm eating, you know. Um, and then mindfulness is also a grounding technique. Counteract negative thoughts with positive mantras or affirmations and journaling. This is 100% talked about in CBT. Visualization, positive things as we've talked about. Positive memories, positive role models, positive experiences. And re reframe negative thoughts. Shift the focus. Really look at it as a second perspective of is this actually true or is this just made up in my head, you know? And the last form of therapy that really helps me is art therapy. Painting, art journaling, coloring, poetry, um, creatively expressing your feelings through art, music, poetry, writing, or even video games. So how can you creatively express yourself? So these are the ways that I creatively express myself. Art journaling, writing letters, poetry, creating a new Minecraft world in my uh, video game headspace journaling, new music playlist, or making a dream and mood board. Um, I will add this at the end here that if you guys are interested, I am a certified therapeutic art life coach. So if art therapy is something that you want to dabble into but you don't want to go see an art therapist and you just want to try it out, I would highly recommend um, contacting me as a your therapeutic art life coach. Um, I will have my website linked down below so you guys can check it out. Um, and yeah, just let me know if you want me to refer you for services. Um, but you can use art therapy um, in any sort of way that you want. But I'm also, actually I will say this, as my announcements, uh, I actually have two announcements now that I think of it, um, because we are now at the end of the workbook. This is just like a thank you to the reader. So. Um, I will mention these last two announcements before we end this free into action series. Number one, 
I am hosting a creative quarantine group every single Wednesday from 12 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you would like to be a part of this group, it is a free group. Um, you can join and it's for two hours every single week with me, the Certified Therapeutic Art Life Coach, and um, some other participating uh, participants including some of my friends and my boyfriends and we just all collaborate each week to work on therapeutic art practices. So if this is something that you're interested in, please leave a comment down below and I will contact you as soon as I can. And lastly, the other big announcement is next week I will not be posting a new video on this channel. I am taking a week break because my second workbook will be released. So be on the lookout on my Instagram at starsketchart. Um, I will have the username in the description box down below for when that is released. I am so close to being done with that and I just have to put on the final touches this week and all of that. So I'm very excited for that to be released. I hope that you guys are excited as well. I will obviously do a, you know, show you guys what it looks like and everything once I get it in the mail myself this month. And I'm so excited to release my second one. I so overdue. And yes, I will do another series like this on this channel about my next workbook. So I hope that you guys are excited about that, about my workbook being released next week. And without further ado, I am going to go. I hope that you guys enjoyed this series and this video. Let me know if you have any questions um, or if you would like to join that group down in the comment section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys all in the next video in two weeks. I will be doing a vlog in two weeks. So be on the lookout for that and I'll see you guys then. Bye!